conference deal with SBI General to strengthen disaster resilience. Four received life sentences for shocking murder in Assam. Assam Legislative Assembly's autumn session begins today. India's tax base expands 58.57 lakh new fillers celebrate a formalized future. India set to harness the power of the fourth industrial revolution, says resident Murmu. Welcome to Nagaland TV, the voice of all the people. You are watching English News Now. Let's move on to the details. At least five people lost their lives earlier today when as SUV they were traveling in, veered of course and collided with a guard drill on a Ara Baksar four-lane road. The accident occurred under the unclear circumstances leading to the tragic fatalities. Emergency services responded promptly to the scene but the extent of the crash resulted in multiple casualties and investigation into the cause of the accident is underway with authorities working to determine the factors that lead to the vehicle's loss of control. Outrage spread across India today as protests erupted in Kolkata and Patna following the shocking rape and murder of a trainee doctor at RJ Medical College and Hospital in Kolkata. In Kolkata, a large crowd gathered to demand justice for the victim whose death was sparked widespread anger and calls for immediate action. Demonstrators voiced their frustration over the perceived lack of safety for women and called for accountability from authorities. The protest intensity was matched by similar demonstration in Patna where students from Carmel High School organized a rally to express their solidarity with the victim and to demand stricter measures to prevent such atrocities. The Patna protests mirrored the anger felt nationwide, underscoring the urgent need for systematic change to combat violence against women. Both protests highlight a growing national movement seeking justice and reform in the wake of tragic incident. The demonstration reflect a broader call for enhanced security and legal measures to protect women and ensure perpetrators are held accountable. <laughs> लोगों के लिए फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट का काम करते थे ये इनका तालुका गुजरात से और सेबी ने क्लीन चिट दिया था हिंडनबर्ग में ये कहा था जबकि 20,000 करोड़ बेशेल कंपनियों का लगा हुआ है अदानी शेयर मार्केट में तो उसके बाद सेबी ने उसको क्लीन चिट दिया अब हिंडनबर्ग ने कहा है कि ये सेबी तो खुद मिली हुई है सेबी की चेयरमैन जो है वो खुद इन्वॉल्ड है उन शेयर में जो जो शेल कंपनियों में जो पैसा लगा हुआ है कंफ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट है मेरे कहने का मतलब है चेयरमैन जिसने देखरेख करनी है कि क्या इररेगुलेटरीज हो रही है शेयर मार्केट में अगर उसकी चेयरमैन खुद इन्वॉल्व हो हम उसका रेजिग्नेशन मानते हैं उसकी ज्वाइंट पार्लियामेंट कमेटी की हम इंक्वायरी मानते हैं
उसमें ये दिखाया जाता है कि अडानी अडानी ने जितना पैसा निवेश किया है बैंकों से लोन लिया है वो किसी आधार पर नहीं है उसने तमाम कानूनों का उल्लंघन किया सही गलत अलग बात है सुप्रीम कोर्ट भी इसका संज्ञान लेता है कहता है इस पर इंक्वायरी हो अब इसके लिए सबसे अच्छी संस्था वो मानते हैं सेबी है क्योंकि तो सारे शेयर कौन से बैंक किसको पैसा दे रहा है क्यों दे रहा है ये सब सेबी देखती है भाई हम और आप दो रुपए निवेश करते हैं तो हमारी संरक्षक सेबी है करोड़ों लाखों करोड़ों रुपए बैंक लेता है तो सेबी के बनाए हुए कानून और तौर तरीकों के हिसाब से देता है तो वो उसका उसको देखते हैं सब लोग मिलकर तो सेबी ने इसमें इंक्वायरी की हम लोग उस बात से नहीं मानते लेकिन सेबी ने उनको क्लीन चीट एक तरीके से दे दी हम लोग तब भी कहते रहे कि ये क्लीन चीट के जो तौर तरीके हैं ये गलत है और हमें संदेह हो रहा है कि बात सही नहीं की गई अब अचानक ये बात निकल कर आती है कि सेबी के चेयरपर्सन जो हैं माधवी जी इनका कुछ पुराने समय में कुछ उनके 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 शेयर से और चीजों से कोई संबंध है इसका मतलब है उनकी कोई वित्तीय लेन देन है।, है नहीं है क्या है अंग्रेजी में जो एक बात कही जाती है वो स्पष्ट हो गई कि कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट था जब आपका कोई भी अगर संबंध था अडानी ग्रुप से तो आपको उसकी कमिटी की संस्था की चेयर होने की कोई आपके पास नैतिक जगह नहीं बनती आप हट जाती भाई सीधी बात है ना समझ लो एक आदमी है उसके बेटे पर इल्जाम लगता है और वो वहां का कोतवाल है तो क्या आप उसकी इंक्वायरी सही मान लेंगे आप कहेंगे ठीक है आप किसी और को आने दीजिए इंक्वायरी हो जाए उसके बाद आप वापिस को हम ये थोड़ी कह रहे हैं आप सही गलत इंक्वायरी पर आप उस समय काबिज होकर कैसे बैठ सकती है इसीलिए हमने कहा कि अब हम पे भरोसा नहीं रह गया सीबी पे जब तक माधवी बुच वहां रहेंगे कोई भी तथ्य सामने शायद ना हो सकता है वो बिल्कुल क्लीन भी हो इसलिए एक ही चीज है कि जेपीसी बने जेपीसी में सांसद होते हैं सांसदों के पास अधिकार होता है कि माधवी जी को बुला लें फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर को बुला लें और उनको उस तरीके से सवाल पूछे जो सी नहीं पूछ सकती है क्या आप एज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट प्रिपेयर टू हियर द कोलकाता रेप एंड मर्डर केस टूडे The atmosphere remains tense and unpredictable. Advocate Satyam Singh commented on the situation, explaining that the ongoing protests are fueled by the dissatisfaction with the lack of conclusive progress in the case. Why are they protesting? Because they have not received any conclusive information, Singh stated. He highlighted that the Chief Justice of India, CJI, had previously urged protesters to call off their agitation. but the response has been mixed with demonstrators continuing their calls for justice today's hearing is expected to address the various concerns raised by both the public and the legal community with protesters demanding immediate action and clarity the outcome of hearing is crucial for resolving the escalating unrest and ensuring that justice is served in the high profile case the supreme court's decision could significantly impact the ongoing protests and shape the future course of legal proceedings in this tragic case see uh, even uh, why they are uh, protesting because they have not you know got any kind of things you know you know conclusive so that is why they are protesting and uh, i think today uh, we we will have to see that what happens today and how cgi reacts on the same because on the last date of hearing cgi you know himself requested to all of them uh to call up the protest but let's see what happens today because the you know our today's hearing is a very you know non predictive i can't predict anything in the future or uh, you know you know in anything in advance is what will happen in the court because uh, you know lot of things uh, will happen today you know cbi will file a status report now the west bengal will file a report so uh, we'll have to see how cgi reacts i came here straight from delhi Straight from the airport to meet the parents, to understand their sentiments. They have told me certain things. I would keep it in confidence till now, based on what they told me, based on the information which I have about the sources. I will today, as a first step, write. a letter and send a sealed cover to the chief minister rest i'll discuss with you later tiruvananthapuram airport was placed under a full emergency today after air india received a bomb threat concerning one of its flights the airport's authority promptly activated emergency protocols leading to a tightened security presence and immediate evacuation of passengers from the affected areas
The visuals from outside the airport showed a heavy deployment of security personnel with emergency vehicles stationed at key points around the terminal. The area was cordoned off to ensure the safety of passengers and staff while authorities conducted a thorough search. The bomb threat led to significant disruptions including delays and cancellations of flights as security teams worked to assess the credibility of the threat and ensure that the airport was safe for resumption of normal operations. Officials are continuing to investigate the source of the threat and are coordinating with national security agencies to manage the situation. The incident has caused incredible anxiety among the travelers and underscores the ongoing need for vigilance in aviation security. Security was significantly tightened outside a hotel in Srinagar, Jammu and Kashmir in anticipation of a crucial meeting involving Lok Sabha leader of opposition Rahul Gandhi and Congress President Malikarjun Kharge. The Congress leaders held a workers' meeting at the venue. Authorities had deployed additional security personnel and implemented strict checks in and around the hotel to ensure the safety of attendees and prevent any potential disruptions. The increased security measures re reflected the importance of the event and the sensitive political context in the region. The Congress party's meeting addressed key issues and strategies for upcoming political challenges with Gandhi and Kharge playing pivotal roles in the discussions. The enhanced security underscored the government's commitment to maintaining order and protecting prominent figures during their visit to the region. In a recent statement, Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivakumar revealed that the state government has significantly increased security measures for the governor due to rising tensions and potential threats from opposition parties. According to the Shivakumar intelligence reports have indicated that elements within the Jantadal, Secular and Bharatiya Janata Party BJP might attempt to create disruptions including potentially targeting the governor to undermine the Congress government. Shivakumar expressed concern that opposition parties might try to incite unrest and discredit the current administration by orchestrating the incidents that could lead to law and order problems. In response, the government has taken proactive steps to ensure the governor's safety and maintain public order. Our duty is to ensure the safety and security of our governor, Shivakumar stated. We are aware of the potential for provocations and are high alert and provided robust security arrangements to prevent any attempts to disturb peace or tarnish the reputations of the Congress government. The tight security measures come as Karnataka's political landscape remains tense with ongoing friction between the ruling Congress party and opposition factions. The Deputy CM's remarks underscore the government's commitment to safeguarding its officials and maintaining stability and political challenges. Depends in the Janta Dal and BJP. They may try to misuse. They may use uh, JDS and BJP people may try to throw stones uh, to the governor and uh, try to bring a bad name to the Congress government. Uh, they are trying to destabilize or they are trying to see that some larger problem is created. So we are very cautious and we have provided uh, proper security to the governor. We respect the governor. We respect his uh, office. We don't want to create confusion because we know that we have got information that JDS and BJP is trying to destabilize and create a bad name to the government. It is our, our duty to give security because there are a lot of uh, social elements in the Janta Dal and BJP. They may try to... In an address at the United Nations Security Council, UNSC, 
Open debate on the new agenda for peace addressing global, regional and national aspects of conflict prevention. India's charge DFRS and Deputy Permanent Representative Ambassador R. Ravindra outlined a multifaceted strategy for the addressing the complexities of modern conflict. Speaking at the forum, the, he emphasized the growing global divide between regions of peace and those plucked by conflict. The highlighted the increasing complexity of conflict settings, particularly in Africa and West Asia. Exacerbated by terrorism, armed militias, organized crime, and the misuse of emerging technologies, Ambassador Ravindra argued for a holistic approach to conflict prevention which must extend beyond political processes to include sustainable development, inclusive economic growth, and strategies for resolution, reconciliation, recovery, and reconstructions. India's extensive role in Peacekeeping and peace building was also showcased with the country having committed over 40 billion in developmental projects, including the India UN Development Partnership Fund. Ravindra underscored the recent global development compact proposed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, aimed at leveraging India's development experiences for global benefit. In closing, Ambassador Ravindra cautioned against using roles in conflict prevention without proper deliberation and preparation, emphasizing the importance of relying on designated bodies for such tasks. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me begin by congratulating Sierra Leone for the historic presidency of the Security Council. I also would like to thank Sierra Leone for organizing this open debate and brief us for their insights. Mr. President, we are living in a world that is increasingly divided. Some regions enjoy a sustained level of uh, peace, security, and prosperity, while others fall into seemingly endless cycles of con conflict and violence. Conflict set settings in recent times have also become more complex and uncertain, particularly in parts of Africa and West Asia. Terrorists, armed militia, organized criminal groups with external support and misuse of emerging technologies are also having profound impact on conflict dynamics. Thus, we need to recognize that conflict prevention is complex, multidimensional, and it calls for a holistic approach. A comprehensive approach focusing not just on the political process, but on sustainable development, inclusive economic growth is therefore inevitable. Resolution Reconciliation, recovery, and reconstruction are also critical aspects of prevention strategies. In this context, let me offer following observations for consideration. India recognizes the primacy of national governments and authorities in identifying and driving priorities, strategies, and activities for sustaining peace. What is needed is to work closely with member states in line with their national requirement and needs rather than advocate prescriptions and solutions from outside. As the world's largest democracy, we are convinced that representative and inclusive government structures will help stabilize peace, safeguard fundamental rights, protect rule of law. Equitable development is also a key component for building and sustaining peace. A strong and effective partnership between UN with regional organizations is a prerequisite, particularly in the context of Africa. Given the fact that nearly 70% of Chapter 7 mandate resolutions are on Africa, Africa's continued denial of representation in the permanent category of membership is a blot on the collective credibility of this Council. India has always supported the Isilvani consensus and called for permanent African representation in an expanded Council. Those who continue to deny expansion of permanent category and Africa's rightful place in it must be called out. Terrorism is a global threat, not only to peace but and peace and security, but also to development. No global prevention mechanism can be complete without a comprehensive approach to counter-terrorism. We reiterate the urgent need for a comprehensive convention on international terrorism. The prevention paradigm cannot ignore the resources needed for socio-economic development. The governing architecture of the international financial institutions require structural changes with more representation from the global south. Similarly, 
realization of unkept promises such as climate finance is needed. Mr. President, India has always played an important role in both peacekeeping and peace building. We have engaged in peace building through extensive development partnership with countries in the global south. The cumulative value of India's developmental projects now exceed US dollar 40 billion, encompassing soft loans, grants, and capacity building training programs. I would uh, like to particularly highlight the India UN Development Partnership Fund as a testament to India's unwavering commitment to multilateralism and global development. Mr. President, at the third Voice of the Global South Virtual Summit hosted recently by India on 17th August, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi proposed a comprehensive global development compact on behalf of India. The foundation of this compact will be based on India's development journey and experiences of development partnership. This is a testimony to India's close partnership with the Global South. Finally, we draw on our experience of both peacekeeping and peace building to caution that conflict prevention is best left to bodies mandated and configured to do so. Assuming such a role without any deliberation and preparation on the issue is a recipe for failure. Before I conclude, Mr. President, we earlier heard a delegation repeating again its falsehood about my country. I will not dignify this falsehood with a response in the interest of time. Such remarks deserve nothing but contemptuous dismissal. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said that for decades India's policy was maintain equal distance from all. But today India's policy is to become closer to all countries. While addressing the Indian diaspora in the Poland, Modi said that today's India wants to connect with all. Today's India wants development of all. India advocates peace in this region. India's concept is clear. This is not an era of war. PM Modi said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserted that if any country faces a crisis, India is the first country to extend a helping hand. India is an advocate of permanent peace in this region. Our stand is very clear. This isn't an era of war. This is the time to come together against those challenges which threaten humanity. Therefore, India believes in diplomacy and dialects. Modi told the gathering, the remarks comes ahead of his trip to Kiev, the first visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Ukraine since the country became independent in 1991. Modi said that if any country faces a crisis, India is the first country to extend a helping hand wherever in the world there is an earthquake or any disaster. India has only one mantra, humanity first. He added, Prime Minister Modi's visit to Poland is the first trip by an Indian Prime Minister to the country in the past 45 years. He showed confidence that in this third term, he will make India the third largest economy. दशकों तक भारत की नीति थी कि सारे देशों से समान दूरी बनाए रखो आज के भारत की नीति है सारे देशों से समान रूप से नदी की बनाओ का भारत सबसे जुड़ना चाहता है आज का भारत सबके विकास की बात करता है आज का भारत सबके साथ है सबके हित की सोचता है हमें गर्व है कि आज दुनिया भारत को विश्व बंधु के रूप में सम्मान दे रही है जिनको कहीं जगह नहीं मिली उनको भारत ने अपने दिल और अपनी जमीन दोनों जगह स्थान दिया है यह 
हमारी विरासत है जिस पर हर भारतीय गर्व करता है पोलैंड तो भारत के इस सनातन भाव का साक्षी रहा है हमारे जाम साहब को आज भी पोलैंड में हर कोई दोबरे यानी गुड महाराजा के नाम से जानता है वर्ल्ड वॉर टू के दौरान जब पोलैंड मुश्किलों से घिरा हुआ था जब पोलैंड की हजारे महिलाएं और बच्चे शरण के लिए जगह जगह भटकते थे तब जाम साहब दिग्विजय सिंह रंजीत सिंह जाडेजा जी आगे आए उन्होंने पुलिस महिलाओं और बच्चों के लिए एक विशेष कैंप बनवाया था जाम साहब ने कैंप के पुलिस बच्चों को कहा था जैसे नवानगर के लोग मुझे बापू कहते हैं वैसे ही मैं आपका भी बापू हूं साथियों 21वीं सदी का आज का भारत अपनी पुरानी वैल्यूज अपनी विरासत पर गर्व करते हुए विकास के रास्ते पर आगे बढ़ रहा है आज दुनिया भारत को उन खूबियों के कारण जानती है जिसे भारतीयों ने सारी दुनिया के सामने साबित करके दिखाया है हम भारतीयों को एफर्ट्स एक्सलेंस और एम्पति के लिए जाना जाता है हम दुनिया में जहां भी जाते हैं हम भारत के लोग मैक्सिमम एफर्ट्स करते दिखाई देते हैं एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप हो केयर गिवर्स हो या हमारा सर्विस सेक्टर हो भारतीय अपने एफर्ट्स से अपना और अपने देश का नाम रोशन कर रहे हैं ये मैं आपकी बात बता रहा हूं दुनिया में कहीं भी भूकंप आता है कोई प्राकृतिक आपदा आती है भारत का एक ही मंत्र है ह्यूमैनिटी कहीं युद्ध हो तो भारत कहता है ह्यूमैनिटी और इसी भाव से भारत दुनिया भर के नागरिकों की मदद असम चीफ मिनिस्टर हिमांत विश्व शर्मा इज सेट टू इंट्रोड्यूस ए सिग्निफिकेंट बिल इन द अपकमिंग स्टेट असेंबली सेशन स्टार्टिंग अगस्त 2022 दिस बिल विल मैंडेट गवर्नमेंट रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ मैरिजेस एंड डाइवोर्सेस अमंग मुस्लिम्स इन असम replacing the current system managed by qazis the bill aims to combat child marriage by ensuring no marriage registration occur below the age of 18 the aiudf and congress have expressed strong opposition aiudf mla mazibur rahman stated they support amending child marriage provisions but will protest against the repeal of the current muslim marriage and divorce laws which they argue align with sharia Congress leaders including Wazid Ali Choudhury and Nurul Huda criticized the bill as an interference with religious practices and attempt to target the Muslim community. Additionally, the Assam cabinet approved 
a measure to protect land around heritage structures, restricting transactions to families with a three-generation residency. Mizoram Health Minister Lalrin Poi announced the launch of a new healthcare scheme, the Universal Healthcare System, which will cover the entire population, including government employees and pioneers. The scheme will be introduced after signing a loan agreement with the Asian Development Bank ADB, which will provide rupees 1,000 crore in funding. The current Mizoram healthcare scheme has outstanding medical bills of over rupees 9.8 crore for 2,921 beneficiaries, highlighting the need for a more comprehensive healthcare system. Additionally, 243 villages in the state lack healthcare centers for clinics, underscoring the challenges in assessing healthcare services. The new scheme aims to address these issues gaps and provide universal access to the healthcare services in Mizoram. The government will work towards establishing a robust healthcare infrastructure, including health centers and clinics, to ensure that all citizens have access to quality healthcare. Union Minister of State for Jal Sakti, Raj Bhushan Choudhury, reviews the various central schemes being implemented in Meghalaya during his visit to Shillong on Monday. Meghalaya Minister of Water Resource Department C. Simban was also present during the meeting in the State Secretariat. Along with the senior officials, the minister expressed satisfaction with the progress in the implementation of schemes in Meghalaya and offered suggestions for mitigating scarcity of water during the dry season, including construction of reservoirs on the issue of maternal mortality ratio and infant mortality rate. He highlighted the importance of education and specifically on the importance of increasing female literacy. The Northeastern Handicraft Handloom Development Corporation NEHHDC, held a certification program in Waka on Wednesday, led by Mabe Molotha from the District Industries and Commerce. Lotha encouraged trainees to apply their skills and pursue entrepreneurship with instead of relying solely on government jobs. Anuranjan Singh and Bidyut Sarma from the NEHHDC praised the participants for the dedication to handloom and weaving training, emphasizing self-reliance over the financial gain. Chonchio M. Izang from the Charity Club highlighted PMKVY STT scheme, noting the program ran from April 18 to June 29. The event concluded with certificates awarded to 32 trainees. Actor Vijay officially launched the symbol and flag of his newly formed political party, Tamil Nanga Vetri Gazam TVK, during a high profile event in Chennai. The unveiling ceremony marked a significant milestone for the party, which aims to make a notable impact in Tamil Nadu's political landscape. The event was attended by numerous supporters and political figures, showcasing Vijay's growing influence in the state's political arena.
Former Orisha Chief Minister Navir Patnayak hosted and honored members of the men's hockey team who won the Olympic bronze medal. At this re residence in Bhuvaneshwar, earlier today, the felicitation event celebrated the team's remarkable achievement and their contribution to Indian sports. Patnayak expressed his appreciation for their dedication and success, highlighting the significance of their victory for the state and the nation. सबसे पहले तो मैं ये बोलना चाहूँगा कि हमारे माननीय श्री नवीन पटनायक सर जी हैं उनका हॉकी में जो एक मैं रोल बताऊँ तो एक बहुत ही हिडन हीरो की तरह और सबसे बड़ी बात तो ये है कि जितना उन्होंने हॉकी के लिए किया है हॉकी इंडिया के लिए किया है उन्होंने तब हाथ पकड़ा है हॉकी का जब कोई नहीं था आज अगर पूरे स्पोर्ट्स कैपिटल हम बोल सकते हैं कि उड़ीसा पूरा स्पोर्ट्स कैपिटल हो गया है तो सर का बहुत ही एक इम्पोर्टेंट रोल रहा है तो मैं अपने हॉकी इंडिया की तरफ से और अपने पूरे टीम मैच की तरफ से सर का धन्यवाद करता हूं और यही वजह थी आज हम लोग सर का आशीर्वाद लेने के लिए आए थे धन्यवाद सबसे पहले तो मैं ये बोलना चाहूंगा कि हमारे माननीय श्री नवीन पटनायक सर जी हैं उनका हॉकी में जो एक मैं रोल बताऊं तो एक बहुत ही हिडन हीरो की तरह और सबसे बड़ी बात तो ये है कि जितना उन्होंने हॉकी के लिए किया है हॉकी इंडिया के लिए किया है उन्होंने तब हाथ पकड़ा है हॉकी का जब कोई नहीं था आज अगर पूरे स्पोर्ट्स कैपिटल हम बोल सकते हैं कि उड़ीसा आज पूरा स्पोर्ट्स कैपिटल हो गया है तो सर का बहुत ही एक इम्पोर्टेंट रोल रहा है तो मैं अपने हॉकी इंडिया की तरफ से और अपने पूरे टीम मैच की तरफ से सर का धन्यवाद करता हूं और यही वजह थी आज हम लोग सर का आशीर्वाद Vice President Kamala Harris has recently advocated for the significant boost in housing support a move many considering along overdue this initiative aims to address the persistent housing challenges facing various communities providing much needed relief and support the proposed measures are the accepted to enhance affordable housing options improve accessibility and stimulate housing development the push comes to res in response to growing concerns about housing affordability and availability which have been exacerbated by economic and social factors over recent years Harris support for his initiative reflects a broader commitment to tackling critical social issues and addressing systematic inequalities the housing boost is anticipated to play a crucial role and in improving living conditions and fostering more equitable communities in a significant escalation of the ongoing conflict ukraine has executed one of the largest drone strikes ever on moscow the coordinated attack targeted key locations in the russian capital marking a sub substantial development in the confrontation between the two nations the drone strike which appears to be part of the ukraine's intensified military strategy has caused widespread disruption and damage the scale of the attack underscores the tightened tensions and the increasingly sophisticated nature of the conflict russian authorities are responding to the attack with tightened security measures and a detailed investigation into the incident the strike has further strained relations between the two countries highlighting the ongoing volatility and the potential for continued escalation in the region Auto and taxi drivers in Delhi have launched a two-day strike, halting their services to protest against a best cab services. The strike, which has significantly disturbed transportation across the city, highlights growing tensions between traditional drivers and the emerging app-based ride-hailing industry. The visuals from Maharaja Ranjit Mark in Delhi show numerous taxis and autos park in protest. with drivers actively participating in demonstrations the strike is aimed at addressing grievances relating to competition from app based services which drivers argue are undermining their livelihoods and operating unfairly the demonstration has caused widespread inconvenience for the commuters with many facing difficulties in finding alternative transportation the striking drivers are calling for a regulatory measures to level the playing field and address the concerns regarding app based cab services the impact of the strike underscores the ongoing challenges in the transportation sector as traditional drivers and modern app based services clash over market dynamics and operational fairness
to enhance disaster management SBI General Insurance and the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority and SDMA have inked a memorandum of understanding MOU to implement a parametric insurance solution this agreement effective for three years aims to bolster Nagaland's resilience against natural disasters by providing comprehensive insurance covers tailored to the state's unique needs the Nagaland Disaster Risk Transfer Parametric Insurance Solution DRTPIS will cover the extreme weather events, including excess and unseasonal rainfall. Parametric insurance is designed to expedite final recovery by the triggering payouts based on predefined weather and the parameters, thus reducing the recovery time after natural calamities. Nagaland, one of India's most disaster-prone regions, has seen a sharp rise in climate-related incidents with a 2% increase reported from 2018 to 2021. The insurance solution is accepted to significantly mitigate the financial impact of such events. Navin Chandra Jha, Managing Director and CEO of General Insurance, emphasized the importance of this initiative, stating, In recent years, India has faced numerous natural disasters. This parametric insurance will offer crucial support by ensuring timely compensation and aiding in quicker recovery. Nagaland's Chief Minister Nifirio expressed enthusiasm about the partnership, calling it a pioneering step in disaster risk management. The initiative will help us build a robust disaster response system, ensuring effective support during emergencies, he said. The event was attended by the prominent figures including Vyasan R. IAS, CEO, Home Commissioner and senior delegates from SBI General Insurance among others. A court in Assam's Sonitpur district has sentenced four men to life imprisonment for the murder of auto rickshaw driver Mohammad Jalil on July 5, 2017. District Session Judge Debashis Bhattacharji also imposed a fine of rupees 10,000 on each defendant. Akbar Ali, Hazrat Ali, Babar Ali and Abu Hanif finding the murder permitted due to a prior dispute. The sentences were announced on Wednesday, concluding eight-year-old case. The Assam Legislative Assembly's autumn session began today in Dispo with increased security due to recent concerns, including the discovery of explosives near the premises. Running until August 30, 2024, the session kicked off with a one-hour caution hour, allowing members to address urgent issues. The state government will represent supplementary demands for grants for the 2024-2025 fiscal year and introduce certain government bills, including amendment related to the scheduled costs and scheduled tribes, reservation and urban water bodies conservation. Authorities have tightened safety measures in the area and the session aims to address significant legislative reforms. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman highlighted a significant increase in the number of new taxpayers this year, expressing our gratitude for the 58.57 lakh income tax returns ITRS submitted by the first-time filers. She emphasized that this growth reflects the widening test net and praised these new contributors for their role in showcasing India as a nation becoming increasingly formalized with more individuals embracing the responsibility of paying taxes. Sitaraman made these remarks during an event in New Delhi, commemoration the 165th anniversary of the Income Tax Department. Also equally appreciate the fact, the cause of the way in which we have come up with this second new scheme and also the way in which the cause of faces you earn the trust of the taxpayer. The number of new net addition this year 
of taxpayers from Ghana. That number also was mentioned earlier. Um, and I'm uh, in, indeed very grateful that uh, 58.57 lakh ideas were received from first time tax filers, which actually is very fun. And I, I can see the tax net widening, and uh, to these new first time tax filers, I give a great word of appreciation because we need such examples which will showcase to the world that India is a country which is getting more and more formalized. People are coming on board and paying up the tax. President Draupadi Murmu on Wednesday said India is ready to face the challenges posed by the Ford Industrial Revolution and take advantage of opportunities arising from it. Speaking at the FIT convocation of the J.C. Bose University of Science and Technology, here Murmu said technology should be used for proper and sustainable development and public interest. Today the world is in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. India is also ready to face the challenges of this revolution and take advantage of the opportunities arising from it, she said. Bangladesh is grappling with severe flooding that has impacted nine districts, including Feni, Nokali and Komila. The disaster has trapped approximately 2, two lakh families and affected around 1.8 million people, as reported by the Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief. Heavy rains and mountain landslide have caused was water to overflow through flood control dams on the Mohuru Kahua and the Ceylon rivers water is seeping into towns at a rapid pace leading to the knee to waist level inundation in many homes rural roads and crops lands are submerged and ponds and fish farms have been washed away as of the latest report a total of 1,89,663 families have been trapped by the flood waters and 1,70,096,248 individuals have been affected. The situation remains dire, with many people still missing and fears of increasing casualties. The response authorities have established 1,359 shelters, accommodation, 17,882 individuals and 3,486 cattle. Additionally, 309 medical teams are active in providing necessary health care to the victims. The scale of the disaster highlights the urgent need for further assistance and the efforts to support the affected communities and manage the crisis effectively. <laughs> the Ministry of External Affairs on Thursday clarified that the opening of the Dumbur Dam upstream of the Gumti River in Tripura has not caused the current flood situation in districts on Bangladesh's eastern borders. We would like to point out that the catchment areas of Gumti River that flows through India and Bangladesh have witnessed the heaviest rains of this year over the last few days. The MEA, Ministry of External Affairs, said in a release, it also mentioned that the catchment areas of the Gumti River that flows through India and Bangladesh have witnessed the heaviest rains of this year over the last few days. The flood in Bangladesh is primarily due to waters from these large catchments. Downstream of the dam, the ministry also asserted that the Dumdur Dam is located quite far from the border, over 120 kilometers upstream of the Bangladesh. It is a slow height, about 30 meters dam that generates power that feeds into a grid from which Bangladesh also draws 40 megawatt of power from Tripura. Along the about 120 kilometer river course, we have three water level observation sites at Amarpur, Swanam. Mura and Swanamura 2 heavy rainfalls has been continuing since 21st August in the 
whole of Tripura and adjoining districts of Bangladesh in the event of heavy inflow, automatic releases have been observed. It said Amarpur station is a part of a bilateral protocol under which we are transmitting real-time flood data to Bangladesh. This is all for today. For more news and updates, keep watching Nagaland TV.